It's a quick recording <coughs> on the Ray model of light. I apologise for my voice, which is really quite dreadful. One of the things about the uh, Ray model is that it enables us to identify the way that light spreads out from a point source. Because light travels in all directions, it's quite difficult to actually illustrate that. We use arrows that represent rays, and those rays um, enable us to show the direction that light's going. However, if we're going to investigate something in particular, it's difficult to draw the rays in all directions. In reality, we're just interested in a few rays that are going to enable us to identify the thing that we're interested in. So if I have an object here, and I want to investigate how that shadow will be actually put upon a screen, then I don't need every single ray coming out of the, the point source. I just need the two rays that are going to identify for me the top and bottom of my object. And then I will see a shadow. And as we can see, our shadow is actually larger than our object because of the, the fact that the rays are going in those two different directions. Now, we use, or well, a candle in particular, we use this something that's like a point source. So we can actually assume that all of those rays are coming out of one single point that's sort of within that particular um, flame of the candle. However, sometimes the source isn't a point source at all. So if we have a source like this one here, which is um, a large filament, then very clearly we're going to have light coming from the top of the filament and light coming from the bottom of the filament and that's going to affect what it looks like on our screen in regards to the shadow. So the light from the top and the bottom of the filament are going to both interact in a particular way at the top of our particular object and similarly the top and the bottom will also interact at the bottom. So we use rays identifying the maximum and minimum part of the light source and the maximum and the minimum part of our object. And we end up with a diagram that looks like this. And what we end up with is almost like a double shadow. So we have a shadow where we have an area which is completely blacked out and looks very, very dark. And then we have a section of shadow that is only partially shaded or blacked out. Now that very dark spot part is called the umbra and that lighter grey part is called the penumbra. And you often see this effect, particularly if you're in a room which has two different light sources. So here you can see in this shadow, the light source that's being used is creating this very clear umbra, dark part here, and the penumbra on both sides. So really what's really important for you guys to be able to do is to be able to draw these kind of ray models. So the things that you want to remember is you either recognise that it's a point source like the flame and draw it as a point source or if you recognize that you've got a filament or two sources of light then you're going to end up with a situation where you'll see an umbra and a penumbra. Okay I hope this was of help for you.